10. So they've been slumping as of late, but Coach McDonald said this game he expects to be tight up and down, much like most of the Carnegie Mellon games have been over the years. Well, in that game against Kings College, Carnegie Mellon scored 112 points. Now it was a double overtime game, but 112, that's a lot of points. Case wins the opening tip. And they'll work it around the perimeter. Interesting matchup with Summers and Kropka. Ron, that matchup goes back eight years. David Thompson with a soft right-handed hook that misses. And here come the Tartans. Two of them played at competing neighboring high schools in Pennsylvania. And now here, battle off in their ninth game, or eighth, seventh game against each other as part of a Division III college team. That was John During with the tip follow for the Tartans. They're on the board first. Austin Fowler all the way across the floor to Julian Person. Person's the freshman. He's number 10. That's Fowler with a shot. Won't go. The other freshman on the floor is number 12, Jordan Dean. That's Person on defense. Now it's Dean, the other freshman. We'll introduce you to the new faces on this team. First broadcast on Media Vision of the year. Nice to be back for our seventh season. Nice block inside by Julian Person. He's got 12 blocks on the season. At 6'7", he plays the guard slot. Yeah, he plays that swing. And in certain situations, you can ask him to step up and be your three. Kick out pass, shot is missed, and David Thompson comes down with the rebound for Case. Thompson to Dean, who goes to Fowler. Austin's going to try again. This time he misses. And Carnegie Mellon comes the other way. John During with the rebound and controlling the basketball. David Thompson this year has gone to more of the traditional basketball shoes. If you remember last year, Ronnie, he wore a lot, looked like wrestling shoes for most of the season. In that thick navy blue color. Well, Ed, I wore wrestling shoes for a long time, and you get absolutely no support from those. All you get is uh, future heel spurs. <laughs> 41, 41. Kropka got called for the charge there, Ron. Case will take over. That's Jordan Dean with the basketball for the Spartans. Tommy Summers, Thompson out top, Dean again. Case looking for their first basket. Two and a half minutes into this basketball game. Thompson working that baseline. And they're going to call David for a travel. Ladies won the first game of our doubleheader today here from Horsburg, 63-51. In a game that got a lot more exciting than it should have been. That's right. A 25-point lead for the Lady Spartans with 13 minutes to go. Tartans with the basketball. Person stepping up for defense. Shots missed. Carnegie Mellon gets the follow, though, and it's John During. He's got all four points. Four to nothing, Tartans. Down the floor, it's Person. Nice feed inside to Thompson. And a reverse layup. Thompson did a nice job of protecting the basketball, using his body to go to the opposite side of the rim to get the two. Tartans worked it inside. They missed the shot. Person down with a rebound to David Thompson. He goes up and he lays it in. Four to four. Quick timeout. Tony Wingen wants one for Carnegie Mellon. We'll take one too. Time left in the opening half. Just over 16 minutes. We'll be back after this break. Welcome to Qdoba's Guide to Dining Companions. Today, the talker. So John broke up with Sally, and Sally told me that Jenny is thinking about breaking up with Brad. I saw this dress. The only way to keep the talker from talking is to get those flapping gums addicted to something else, like our warm and creamy three-cheese queso. 
Mm. So, how's your food? Mm. Mm-hmm. Hello? Can I talk? Eating. Come to Qdoba today and try our three cheese queso and say hello to your next food addiction. Qdoba Mexican Grill. More to explore. Ed Case averaging 73 points per game this season. The Tartans of Carnegie Mellon averaging 69. And if you take out the 112 that they posted, it's even lower than that. You take that total, goes down to just over 65. It's a 4-4 game here with about four minutes gone. Coach McDonald, Ed, was a little worried about the matchups, specifically on the perimeter. He felt that they do well inside because they've got more size, but felt that Carnegie Mellon had guys on the perimeter that would, would create matchup problems for Case. Person traveled with the basketball. Julian Person out of Houston, Texas. Having an outstanding freshman season. And you mentioned the outside shots. That was something that Case, Coach McDonald was afraid of. And for Carnegie Mellon, they're not afraid to shoot from the outside, Ron. They have four players that have made 13 or more from outside the arc. In fact, they've thrown up 285 three-pointers this season. They've made 78. For comparison's sake, well, Case has made 75, but Case opponents have made only 61, and Carnegie Mellon opponents have made only 52. So both teams actually launch it pretty well. Yeah, Case much more comfortable, more compact from the outside, shooting over 40% from the three-point range. Game's knotted, two baskets apiece. Approaching the 15-minute mark in the opening half. Dean loses the basketball. Quickly down the floor. And the Tartans take a two-point lead. Jason Blakeney. Blakeney. Jason Blakeney. Fouls in the backcourt. Marshall Massengale get called for the hold. As Dean was trying to come around the, the edge, and get the inbound pass. Massengale grabbed him, held him up. Case trying to break that press. Dean does it. Foul line kicks it off. Austin Fowler, ball fake. And he pulls up from 12 feet. And Fowler may have gotten away, away with a little walk there, Ron. Austin Fowler from Brother Rice High School in Michigan with his first two of the afternoon. And we've got an elbow inside. Fouls against Carnegie Mellon. It'll go against Jason Blakeney. His first team at third for Carnegie Mellon. Tony Wingen gets an explanation. Dean will break the press. Two on two. Kicks it off to his fellow freshman. And Julian Person hits a three. 9-2 run for the Spartans after falling behind 4-0 early. Miss inside, Summers fights for it. Thompson comes up with a loose ball, hands it off to Dean, and here comes Casey the other way. Spartans up three, inside 15 minutes left to play opening half. Dean along that left baseline to David Thompson. Ball was kicked out of bounds off Carnegie Mellon. A year ago, we got to see Thompson a little bit. He was uh, battling some injuries um, that, that he had actually before the season started, if memory serves me correctly. And what we saw out of him, we liked. Yeah, there were flashes where you could see that he was becoming more comfortable with the offense, learning what it meant to play defense at the Division III level. And by season's end, he was much more comfortable when we first saw him early on. Sean Riley will bring it up for Carnegie Mellon. Tartans are down three. It's nine to six case. 
Double team inside, shot rolls around and drops for Joe Kromka. Kromka is senior like During. Both of them have been a very, both have been very effective players for this Carnegie Mellon team in their four years. Thompson works it inside to Summers, kicks it out, and they're going to swing it. Fowler's going to get a three, and he misses it, but Thompson's pushed out of bounds as he goes up for the rebound. The foul is against Carnegie Mellon. It's Drew Holinsky. Holinsky's the freshman. He's from... That was the fourth team foul on Carnegie Mellon. Case will do it again. For Holinsky, they have a man from Livonia, Livonia, Minnesota, but I believe he's from Livonia, Michigan, and played at Brother Rice High School as a sophomore when Case's junior. Christian Minoli at the end of a very nice break for Carnegie Mellon. Austin Fowler also from Brother Rice, two years older. The Tartans have retaken the lead, it's 10-9. Looking inside to Thompson, David gets it with position, now he's in trouble. Soft left-handed shot from the baseline by the freshman, Dane McLaughlin. That's who we talked about, off the bench. Ability to bring that offense back. Spartans miss a three, the Tartans do. Here come the Spartans. Person with a dribble behind his back, loses control, and he runs out of bounds with it. A little active on the break, too active, and Case turns it over. Three substitutes in for Carnegie Mellon. Max Gordon, John Durings back in, and Joe Belichick also checks in. Tony Wingen will use his entire roster. And he may have already done it in the first eight minutes of this basketball game. <laughs> Turnaround shot by During. Off the glass. He's got six. Full court press. Ernie Mellon's done it the entire game. That's Joe Mims from Aurora High School now in the game for Case. He's wearing number 11. And the other freshman has the basketball now. And Ken Gibbons also in for the Spartans. Thompson, soft hook, missed. During with the rebound. John During may be a senior, but he still looks like he's 15 years yeah. old. <laughs> it's busted in whether or not he owned a razor. Joe Belichick with a three, and it's 15-11, largest lead of the afternoon for Carnegie Mellon. During with a steal, during everywhere for Mellon. Went up for the dunk, missed it. Carnegie Mellon got the rebound, though. Austin and Joe Fowler. Mims is going to steal it. Yeah, Fowler got a nice block, got back on defense. Mims off the glass. Active pace right now, 15-13. Spartans down two. We're inside 11 minutes to play in the opening half. Drive on the left side, drawing a foul. Christian Minoli going strong, Ron, on the left side of the lane. Well, was gonna be against Dane McLaughlin, his first. Christian Minoli, a 54% free throw shooter, makes the first. He's got three points. And that is the lead right now for Carnegie Mellon. Tartans five and six on the season, case eight and three. Monoli with another free throw. Second shot is up and Summers comes down with a rebound. Joe Mims will bring it up for case. Spartans with a little work to do. At Summers top of the key. 
Fowler now along the left block, loses the basketball. Active hands by Carnegie Mellon. Austin's going to tie him up. And it's going to go Carnegie Mellon's way. Case won the opening tip. Possession arrow points towards the Tartans. Carnegie Mellon doing a nice job of moving that basketball around. 15 to shoot, Case wanted to travel. Instead, they're gonna get a foul called and a made basket. Austin Fowler's gonna pick up the foul. And at the line looking for a three-point play will be Christian Manoli. Fowler's first. Manoli's got five points looking for six at the free throw line. And it will be a six point lead if he makes it. That'll be the largest of the afternoon by either team. Sean McDonald wants a timeout. We'll take one too. It's 19-13, Carnegie Mellon with the lead. We'll be back after this break. Attending a Spartan Athletic event and looking for a convenient and upscale hotel to accommodate your stay? The Doubletree by Hilton Cleveland Downtown Lakeside is an official sponsor of Spartan Athletics. Located at 1111 Lakeside Avenue, the hotel is just 10 minutes away from campus and offers amenities like a state-of-the-art fitness center, Stadium 3 bar and grill, free wireless internet, complimentary shuttle service to and from campus, and a warm Doubletree cookie upon checking in. Contact the Doubletree today at 216-241-5100 to receive a discounted rate of just $89 for the 2011-2012 season. The Doubletree by Hilton Cleveland Downtown Lakeside, a proud sponsor of Spartan Athletics since 2008. As David Thompson goes back out onto the floor for Case, we'll take a look at this series. Historically, Ed, Case leads the series 33 wins, 27 losses, including four straight and they've won five of their last six against Carnegie Mellon. A year ago, they beat them by 17 here at Horsburg Gymnasium, but they're down six now as we approach the just inside 10 minutes of the opening half, and they turn it over again. It has been a sloppy first half for this Case men's basketball team. Case now with eight turnovers in the first 10 minutes of play. Massengale, and we got a block on the baseline. Block's gonna go against Ken Gibbons. That will be Gibbons first, team third for the Spartans. Gibbons, the freshman out of Shade High School in Cairnbrook, Pennsylvania. Mims the other way, freshman out of Aurora. Shots blocked, and the Tartans save it. Great effort that time by Joe Kromka. And that's a mismatch. Rob Moen at 6'5", working inside against a 6'1", Ken Gibbons, and it was an easy basket for Moen. Rob Scott now on the floor for Case Western. Leads at eight for the Carnegie Mellon Tartans. Lob it inside, immediately double teamed. Summers misses the shot, gets his own rebound though. Over the years, Tom Summers has been the one that you have to get involved early. He begins to talk to himself a little bit. Very hard on himself. Yes, he is. Quite a competitor. Summers with baseline defense and doing a nice job of slipping by it was Moen. He's got four. It's Rob Scott with the basketball now for Case. Looking at Thompson. Carnegie Mellon bench is very active. They can sense blood here early on in the first half. Turnaround shot by Thompson. It's an air ball. And the ball is knocked out of bounds. Tartans will get it back. I guess they said it hit the baseline before it hit a Carnegie Mellon player. K-1 
Case down eight, inside eight to play opening half. Need to stop, do the Spartans. Massengale on the drive, missed it, short. Summers fighting for it, and a rebound in the backcourt, or a foul on the backcourt. Foul's gonna go against Kromka, Joe Kromka, that's his first. That'll give him two, actually, Ron. They're gonna say Kromka has two. Five team fouls for Carnegie Mellon. On the floor for Case right now, Blake is back into the game, or Jordan Dean, rather. Rob Scott, David Thompson, Julian Person, the two freshman guards are back in the game for Case. Dean with the basketball, dribbles in, throws up a wild out of control shot, goes out of bounds, saved by Carnegie Mellon, and right now the Tartans are just out hustling Case. Yeah, Case looks flat footed, it looks like they just were waiting for the they ball to roll out of bounds. They just waited for that ball to roll out of bounds. And Carnegie Mellon pursued it quickly, went after it. So Case is going to keep it. Rob Scott will inbound it side out. Spartans are down eight. About seven and a half left to play. I guess the question of the shot clock, Ron. They are going to reset the shot clock. They're going to say Carnegie Mellon did have possession enough. Summers inside the three-point line. Air ball. Summers and Scott both on the floor. Dean fights for it. And Summers is going to get called for the foul. Summers reaching in. Marshall Massengale will go to the foul line. He'll shoot two. First foul on Summers, fourth team foul for Case. Massengale, a 77% foul shooter. First shot's up and it's long. Marshall Massengale out of Mill Creek, Washington. Sophomore guard averaging five points a game. Splits him. Nine point lead for Carnegie Mellon. Just over seven minutes to play opening half. It's Dean and Scott in the backcourt for Case. They'll try to bring the ball up against pressure. It's Tom Summers ball above his head. Now it's Thompson and they swing it all the way over to Dean. They slob inside. David Thompson missed the shot, but he was fouled going up. Foul's going to be on Rob Moen. One foul on Moen, 16 fouls for Carnegie Mellon. Thompson's at the line. David will shoot two. Carnegie Mellon in that very tight man-to-man -man defense. In case tried to find that roll around with Thompson. Tom Summers and Rob Scott will come off. Austin Fowler back in, along with Dane McLaughlin. Case down eight. Ball kicked by McLaughlin into the stands. Carnegie Mellon will keep it. 26 seconds on the shot clock. Off the bench for the Tartans. And back in, Christian Manoli. For a quick minute there, it looked like Case had fallen into a 2-3 zone run. Manoli will inbound it, and he'll get it right back. That's During, left corner, three in the air. And he couldn't get the tip, but Riley fought for the rebound. During again. That's Riley left corner. Same spot During was in. And this time Rashawn Riley knocks it down. He's got three. 11 point lead, Ed. 
And dangerously close for Case Western. Getting away from them quickly. No look pass picked off inside. Mellon just doing a great job on defense right now. That was Blakeney that stepped in the passing lane, anticipated it, and brought it the other way. Travel by Matt Manoli. Before the no-look pass, as Case doubled down, Manoli got rid of it, but he took an extra step inside the charge circle. Case will get it back. And they'll have six minutes to try to cut into this double-digit lead by Carnegie Mellon. That's seven turnovers now for the Tartans. Case has nine. Thompson with a turnaround shot. The shots are being contested very nicely by Carnegie Mellon. Case isn't getting any easy looks. And he carried the basketball. Two, two times down the floor for Manoli, two turnovers. That has to be what, run a half dozen carries we've seen Today. between the women's game yeah. and first half here of the men's game. Case shooting 41% from the floor. They're seven of 17. Carnegie Mellon at 50%. McLaughlin gave up position, and the turnover led to two easy points for Carnegie Mellon. He's hearing about it now as he heads to the bench. Matt Labotka dribbled it in and laid it up and in. His first two, it's 29-16, a 13-point lead for Carnegie Mellon. That team right there, Case, is in the hole. We'll take a timeout with just over five minutes to play in the opening half. We'll be back after this break. this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. As both teams come back out of their timeouts, if you look at UAA play going into the opening weekend, Emory's ranked number five in the country right now. They're 11 and 0. They're the only team in the top 25, but NYU's 9 and 0, Rochester's 9 and 2, and then Case and Wash U are 8 and 3. But the Spartans are getting everything they want and more right now from Carnegie Mellon. Tartans are up 13 with five minutes left to play in the opening half. McLaughlin with it. Hands it off to Person. Case will swing it. Looking inside to Thompson. Fowler still with the basketball. Active hands by John Dury. Eight seconds to shoot. Austin pushes it in, misses the layup, and down with a rebound is Carnegie Mellon. They can't miss those. You want to get back in a ball game, unfortunately. Great defense by McLaughlin. Tied him up in the possession arrows in Case's favor. Boy, you're right, Ed. You got to make those. Can't miss. Inside, easy layups, and you can't miss open looks. Mellon plays good defense, and you don't get a shot, or you get one that you have to throw up erratically, that's one thing, but shots with inside three or four feet, and shots with open looks, you've got to knock them down. Foul up front on Rashawn Riley. One foul on Riley, seven team fouls on Carnegie Mellon, so that's going to send Jordan Dean to the foul line. Case will be in the bonus because of it. Dean, an 82% foul shooter. First one's up, and it's good. If Jordan gets a second. Jordan Dean, a freshman, 5'10", out of Creekside High School in St. John's, Florida. Jordan missed the second. And nobody gets back. And Carnegie Mellon almost had an easy layup. Mm -hmm. Matt Labaca got too deep. Caught the ball, took an extra step. Caught himself under the stanchion. Fowler with it. 
fadeaway shot. You know, it's, it's strange, Ron, when Case looks for a long rebound, it's a short one. When they, they crash the boards looking for a short rebound, that ball takes a big bounce off the rim, and Mellon ends up with the rebound. Lobaca misses, and Person comes down with a rebound for Case. Case being out-rebounded 18-9 here in the first half. David Thompson with it, working inside against a double team, and he drops it in. Thompson with seven, Case is back to within 10. The goal's got to be about six going into the halftime locker room. Three by During, and that long rebound, once again, almost picked up by Carnegie Mellon. Person got it, though, off to Dean. Dean with the left hand. Wow, nice move. Got real deep on the right side. Ron reversed his field. Came all the way back, switched hands, and laid it up left-handed for the bucket. Dean's got three, and Case is within eight. Manoli controls. McLaughlin on him. Manoli with a nice feed to During, and John got an easy look. Uh, somebody lost track of John During underneath, and During was just lurking, looking for that kind of easy handoff. McLaughlin, three in the air, rattles around. Riley stepped on the sideline. He's out of bounds. Case is going to get it back. Four Tartans into the basketball game. Massengale is one of them. Along with Sean Brophy. Jason Blakeney is another. Dean with the basketball for Case. And turnover is now tied at 10 following the... Jordan Dean will inbound it for Case. Massengale stand next to him, provide the defense. It's 21-31, Case down 10. Fowler inside, reverse layup. Austin Fowler's got four. And McLaughlin just got beat, and it cost his teammate David Thompson a Technical foul. Technical foul coming up on somebody. Technical foul was whistle on the inside. I was going to go against David Thompson. They're going to call a technical on Thompson. Well, the personal foul is against Dane McLaughlin, which started it. Thompson, along with McLaughlin and the Tartan, were on the floor. At the line, shooting will be Sean Brophy. Brophy, a 65% free throw shooter, makes the first. And he hits them both. Call was that as Thompson was getting up off the floor, an official whistled him for hitting the throat of one of the Carnegie Mellon players. Well, they said he, as he was, uh, as he put his arm down to push himself up, they said he put his hand around the kid's throat. Now the free throws by Brophy. And he's a perfect three of three. This could be a four-point swing. What was a 29-23 game is quickly going to expand. Or 31-23 game, an eight-point lead. Summers comes down with a rebound. He's going to hand it off to Blake in case he's got some work to do. Down 11 again. They had cut it to eight. And they had possession after they cut it to eight. So they had a chance to cut it to six. It's been a five-point swing. 
Fowler into Summers. Summers working inside. Soft hook shot. It's good. Case needed that one. Tom Summers has four. And you can see the frustration in Summers' face beginning to boil over a little bit. He, him and Massengale bumped into each other mid-court. Mid Massengale working against Dean. He's going to pull up and drop it. And that's that matchup that Coach McDonald was talking about. That if Case gets two, Carnegie Mellon's going to shoot over the top and pick up three. And trading buckets that way is not a good, good prescription for victory. Dean will try a three. Jordan Dean has six. It's back to eight. Ed, you had said about three minutes ago if Case could cut it to six at halftime, they would feel good about that. And they've got an opportunity if they get a stop here. They're trailed by 10 with just over three to go. During. Ball's loose. McLaughlin comes up with it. You know, 34 that, seconds. And from that perspective, you just you work at it. Mass and Gale on Dean. Shot clock, game clock almost in sync, Ron. Maybe a two second difference. That's Dean. We got 18 seconds. Now it's Summers and they swing it over to Dean. 12 seconds to shoot. Dean working hard, kicks it out. McLaughlin, ball fake. And a shot is long. Five seconds left. Quickly down the floor. And Durings going to get a layup. And Summers is going to get a foul with under a second to play. Case had a chance to cut it to six before the half. And now John Durings going to step to the line with a chance to stretch it to 10. Leads at nine, During's got nine. 76% from the line is During on the season. Four tenths of a second, enough to catch and shoot, Ron. Yep, setting up the home run. Summers is gonna let it fly. Ball was tipped on the inbound. Lost some speed as Summers threw it down. 